Alright, so today we are continuing on the 670 long travel suspension go-kart. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to add bump stops to the rear suspension. stops in place. I did have to make these removable so therefore we can still get the engine out of the frame. They're only held on by three half inch bolts so they can be removed and all that kind of stuff. The, the biggest thing is I wanted to make sure that whatever we do with this thing, if we want to jump it or anything like that, we're not in, we're not worried about the trailing arms crashing into it. The biggest thing was this bar right here gets really close to the secondary pulley on the CVT and I wanted to make sure that whatever position of, this, of the, of the uh, shocks are, we're not worried that the trailing arms are going to crash into the secondary pulley and bend anything or break anything. But right now, actually, the position of the shocks, uh, the shocks bottom out before the, before the bump stops do. But if we ever want to soften the suspension, then the bump stops will bottom out first. So, I think it's finally time to start working on finishing welding all this whole assembly. We also have to finish the, uh, the gearbox mounts, but we can do that once the engine's out of, out of the way, and some of this stuff is out of the way. Alright, so finish the gearbox mounts. I added this down to here where the bearing is because this chain is going to try to be pulling the gearbox this way and this is going to help uh, keep it in position. Also added this one down here you can't really see that's going to help tie that in down to there. Also want to add another one from this mount back here to the engine plate. That's going to help the engine gearbox from flexing towards each other when it's under hard acceleration. But we can we can do that one later. So this gearbox is now nice and solid in here. Let's finish disassembling this whole thing and start welding the whole frame together.
Yeah, I almost forgot we need to weld on the brake caliper. That's kind of important. Almost forgot this thing. So I made up this, uh, this bracket right here and basically the front is going to weld up to here and then the back end of right here is just going to connect somewhere to either here or up here somewhere and that should be strong enough should be strong enough for this most of the force is pushing it this way So I did decide to leave the second pair of shock mounts on here just because in case we want to add shock absorbers later because I, I really want this thing to be like a jumping vehicle and I remember jumping this thing originally with the original suspension and every time we jumped it, not really that high even, it would just land super hard and the shocks would bottom out all that kind of stuff which is kind of why I originally put four of these shocks on here to kind of help it, you know, not bottom out when landing, but we found out very quickly that that was just way too much for for the suspension. It was just way too stiff. So I'm leaving these on here in case we want to add shock absorbers late. I'm still trying to find shock absorbers uh, from like eBay or Amazon that's the right length like this, but it's just a little hard to try to find that kind of stuff because eBay and Amazon doesn't give you dimensions on anything automotive. It just gives you parts numbers and it doesn't that doesn't do me any good. I need dimensions on this kind of stuff so I can figure out if it's the right length or not. And I know you guys were saying in the last video of this project, what if I just took the spring off of these shocks, but I think it'll, these are $100 each, so I don't really want to take the shock off when I can go and I can spend like 30, 30 or 35 bucks on shock absorbers on eBay or Amazon. That's going to be a lot cheaper than modifying these $100 uh, go power sports shocks. So anyway, let's finish reassembling this thing. Let's put the shocks back on get the tires on and finally get the engine back into place. So originally, I was going to have two of these chain tensioner bolts on here, like how I have on the CBR1000 projects, but I think one of them is going to be good enough. This thing only has like, what, 22 or 25 horsepower, something like that, so I don't think we need two of them. Plus, the other one actually won't fit right here because the rim of the tire actually gets pretty close to this thing, so it actually won't fit right here. So I'll, I'll probably end up cutting this one off, this little ear that I left on here, and I want to cut this one to shape. I'll also get rid of this uh, jagged edge right here.
Alright, so I think we should work on the headers and mufflers. Now, this is the original headers and mufflers from this engine, and obviously it's not going to fit on this new setup, plus these kind of look like crap, so let's, uh, let's make something else. Now, I bought these on Amazon. These are nice, cheap uh, motorcycle mufflers from Amazon, and I want to do, kind of like how I have on the CBR1000 project, I want to have like dual mufflers sticking out just like that. Yeah, something something like that. I think that'll look pretty cool. So I'm not gonna bother to do any uh, fancy stainless headers because one, I don't have stainless, and two, this project isn't fancy enough for uh, stainless headers. So let's just use normal tubing. This one doesn't want to go in.
back. So I wanted to make it to where the header pipes are equal lengths of each other because I really want that nice V-twin sound that these engines are well known for. So I wanted to make the header pipes equal lengths so it sounds pretty. And I think I got it like within a couple inches of each other. I think this one's a little bit longer, but it should still sound pretty awesome. I, I definitely really like the look of this. These things kind of look like rockets on the back of here. So... And I also made it to where uh, they can't, the, uh, this is adjustable, so they do move with the engine and I can still, you know, uh, clamp them down into place. So, now I do want to mess with the front suspension. It doesn't make sense to do all this to the rear suspension and not touch the front suspension, so I do want to mess with that, get a little bit more travel out of the front suspension, as well as put better shocks uh, on half of the shocks on the front, so that to try to get a little bit, a little better dampening on the front. Um, well, we still have a lot of work we gotta do. We, have, we need to finish the brakes, we need to uh, do the shift cables or sh the shifting mechanism for the gearbox so that so the uh, driver can shift the gearbox. We need. I don't want to put the uh, the original gas tank on here. It's made of steel and it's rusty on the inside so I want to make a nice aluminum gas tank that uh, fits in here. Uh, plus, that, plus the old one doesn't fit anymore on here so we got to make a new uh, aluminum one. And I'm wanting to also put limiting straps on here and I want to make it to where they're adjustable so I want to you know have a bunch of mounting holes on here for the limiting straps to uh, so if we can adjust that for whatever we want to do with this thing. Also I wanted, I wanted to put a sway bar on this thing because this definitely has a lot of body roll on this thing, and I was considering buying a sway bar off a of Player's Razor 1000, the same sway bar I'm using for the uh, CBR 1000, but I felt like it would just be too big and it would really limit, because uh, this thing is way lighter than, uh, than the CBR 1000 and it really limits the uh, sway on the CBR 1000, so I wanted to try and find one that's a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, so I ended up buying a front sway bar off a of Player's uh, Razor 1000, and this thing showed up in the mail. This is way too, this is the problem of tr trying to buy stuff and trying to figure out if it will fit just by looking at a picture of something. This is way too small. This, the picture of this looked like, like this big. But this, yeah, this thing is way too small. I could put this on here, but I just, I don't think it would really do that much. It's uh, three quarters of an inch thick. And I feel like I would just, uh, it just really wouldn't do that much for the, uh, for the sway of this thing. So I'll save this and use it for something else. And I do try eventually, you know, sometimes I do try to reach out to the people selling that stuff on eBay and like reach out and ask, hey, what's the dimensions of this stuff? And most of the time they just never respond or respond with uh, just part numbers, which is kind of annoying. So anyway. All that's going to have to be for the next video of this project, but for now, i got to end this video here. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.